Today, like I said, we're doing something a little different. We are going to take a tour of a friend's garden. And this is my friend, Tanya. She lives in Evansport, Ohio. And I fell in love with her garden this year. And so I asked her if it would be okay if we came over and did a little tour of her garden. And she was delighted to do that. So this is Tanya. And we're going to talk about Tanya's garden. So Tanya, when did you start gardening? You know, when I was a young bride, 1979, uh, everyone had gardens and you did a lot of canning and you had kids. And so I, I did the sweet corn, green beans, tomatoes type thing in mm -hmm. the garden and did the canning. But then when the kids grew up, I became less interested in producing anything in the garden and just having it be. And I fell in love with flowers and thistles and unusual plants. So that's what I do now. Good. Let's start with this plant here behind us. I understand this is one of your favorites. I love these. I call them my warrior thistles. They are Scottish thistle, and the Scottish thistle is the national symbol of Scotland because it has a unique story in history where these literal warriors prevented the Scottish king from being overthrown. You can look it up on Google. It's a pretty cool story, uh, but they've been my favorite. You know how you go to different places and you just pick up random plants. You say, oh, I must have you. You must come home. Well, this was a random plant picked up somewhere. And uh, when, I, when I brought them here, they just uh, made a decision they would grow for me. You know, not everything does that. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and usually it's the things that you really want to grow yeah. that don't. But yeah. you've gotten lucky with this one because it's definitely grown. They, yeah. they are beautiful. Now, do you have any Scottish roots? No, I don't. Oh, no. Okay. No, I'm Finn in English. I'm actually Viking. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> so I like a good warrior. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> One of the things I really like about your garden is how it's broken up into little sections. Mm -hmm. And there's a little section here behind us, and you've got hostas and salvias and flowering plants. And then you've got this little section here with some hostas and some marigolds. And I see you've got some hens and chicks there. I do. Um, my husband has hens and chicks, and we've got ours in a barrel. And he got his from his mother, Aww. who got them from his grandmother, who oh. got them from his great-grandmother. So our hens and chicks are like a fifth generation from Aww. the early 1900s. And oh our daughter gosh. now has them at her house. Yeah. And so we're kind of passing them down as, as much yep. as we can. You know, that's the, that's the things that make gardens fun. Yeah. You know, there's, to, to my way of thinking, a very big difference between landscaping and gardening. And landscaping is beautiful. You want things to look just nice and enhance the property quality. And, but gardening can get a little wild yeah. and a little free. And you, you should raise what you want. It doesn't have to be what someone else wants. You don't have to take anybody's advice. Listen to this. Don't take anybody's advice. Do whatever you want to do. But this is an example of when something doesn't work. Um, <laughs> against the pole barn, it's hot in the summer. Uh -huh. And so I had all kinds of things growing there and it was chaos and it wasn't working and things weren't f flourishing. So we went with rock behind there and, and that way we got the plants away from the heat of the building. Mm -hmm. And then I reduced this to where I can handle as a working person. When I get home, I can do pieces yeah. of the garden. I just can't do the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and I see these gardens and magazines that are just gorgeous, but I know that gorgeous can take a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And even though it's, it's fun and it's enjoyable, I only have so many hours, so much energy. Right. So I do what makes sense. Right. That's why it's just a little black. You know, and my hens and chicks have been around a while, though not five generations. <laughs> but as we go into the garden, I will show you a plant that's over 100 years old that oh, I was cool. given. Yeah. But, but yeah, these guys, these are what's happy here. And you know what? If it doesn't work, if something just doesn't work a place, you just move it. Right. Try it somewhere else. Yeah. Or maybe the plant you got has a disease and you don't know about it. Don't think that's because you're a bad gardener. It's just that things come with different problems and you might have to, you might have to destroy it. Yeah. You might I've have had, to pull it. I've had to do that. We had to do that this year. Yeah. Another thing I like about your garden is the little hidden gems <laughs> like this right here. Can you, can you get me to, to looking at this, honey? We've got... A little snail down here. 
hidden underneath <clears throat> that little hosta. This is my third time to your garden, and that is the first time that I've seen that little snail. <laughs> I, I like whimsy. Yeah. And so if I see something that just gives me a little touch of whimsy, I particularly like metal art, uh -huh. then, then I get it. I don't. And I, I put it somewhere, and they move year to year. It's oh. where they, they talk to me. They tell me where they want to go, and we negotiate a spot every year. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I don't move my stuff too much, but um, I'm, like, I'm with you. If I see something I like, I think, oh, that's going to go in my garden. Yep. And, and I get it. Now we're kind of in the entrance to the main, what I consider the main garden or the main garden area. And I see you have a bell here. Can you tell me about that bell? This came off of a woodshed that my husband's family had, which is just about 100 feet of uh, that direction. And um, it may have been the first, uh, one of the first uh, fire bells in Bryan, Ohio, goes the story, undocumented. But they had it so that they could call them in from the field. So uh, Ad's grandmother would go and she'd ring the bell and they'd know to come in from the field for lunch and dinner. So uh, it was on the wood house. It was propped up there for years. Well, the wood house getting a little shaky, a little old, and Ad did not want to get rid of it. Ad's my husband, and he's a sentimental heart, so we put it here in the garden. So she's just part of our garden. I, I kind of had an idea. I, I got a, a feeling from this yeah. that this had some historical yeah. background for you. Yeah, and it still rings, and the grandkids love it. Oh, I bet they do. <laughs> I like your welcome sign too. Oh, uh, uh, there's a place called Groovy Plant Ranch down near Delaware, Ohio. You gotta go. Lots and lots of cacti, lots of things, and uh, they have a lot of metal art. And, you oh. know, I'm kind of liking metal art. Yeah, so. I can see that. I like your yeah. armadillo over here. Yes, yes. He <laughs> he came from San Antonio. His name Jose. Jose. Yeah, that's from San Antonio, and that was the name of the man who who got it and sold it to us. <laughs> It was inside a, a, a window. He had to climb over 10 things to get to it. <laughs> That's but, it. I always do that. <laughs> and, then, and then when he brings it out and I put it in my suitcase, I thought, this is going to show up on TSA's radar. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Jose, and, and I'm lo I love having him. Now, I understand you got something you added to your garden recently. We did. Let's take a look at that. When I saw this on Facebook, I immediately became jealous. <laughs> this is number one item on my garden wish list right now. Although I'm not sure how they would get it into my yard because there's no easy access. So it may just be on, on my wish list forever. So tell me about your greenhouse. You know, this was such a fluke. Um, I'm, I'm going to retire in a few years and I'm going to have a little more time, especially in the winter, to start plants and, and work with that. And we were driving to the home and garden show in Fort Wayne and my husband and I were talking. I said, you know, we've got the garden is in quadrants. So we had this open quadrant. We didn't have anything in here. Previously been like pumpkins, things like that. I said, you know what would really be neat? And he goes, a greenhouse. <laughs> and I went, how did you know? He says, I've been married to you forever. You know, <laughs> so we, we went to the home and garden show. We walked around and this is a massive show. It's good size. And then all of a sudden we turned a corner and almost literally this is the greenhouse that we saw very similar to it. And, I, and we went, it is meant to be. It is meant to be. So we got it and now we're learning greenhouse. This is a whole different gardening. And, and you had to play with temperature and humidity. And, and we did a lot of YouTubing, you know, to figure out what, how do you put it together. And the greenhouses come intact. They're, you know, what, what we chose came intact uh, and was made by the Amish in uh, central Indiana. And when they delivered it, it came in one unit. And there was one tiny device about this big called a mule. And that lifted the entire greenhouse into place. Oh, wow. You know, it was very simple and that we thought, oh, the man will have trouble negotiating our garden. Yeah, piece of cake. Oh, you know? well, maybe I have hope yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it has, a, this is a, a, greenhouses do need to have really, really good drainage. So my husband put this pad underneath it because we do, we are here sandy and that means our sandy soil water just whoosh, goes right through it. So. Um, he went ahead and built a pad. You don't have to do that. You can do them whatever way you want. You could have flagstone in it if you'd like to have that. Mm -hmm. But that's how we put it together. And we're still learning. Oh my goodness. We got a lot to learn. <laughs> well, let's take a look inside. You betcha. 
Okay, this is really nice. Now I know I've got to have one of these. You do. You do. <laughs> I, you know, we we uh, um, we can't take it with us. You might as well spend what what little bit you got, what a little bit I got. We might as well spend. Might as well. <laughs> this uh, the the greenhouse is such a learning thing, and one of the things we found out is we put it in, and and we we came too late to start plants this year, but we thought, oh, we'll put some tropicals in here and things, and we found out this can get to 160 degrees like that. Yeah. And it's very fast, so we're learning how to deal with the greenhouse. And so we did have to buy shade cloth yeah. uh, to put in, and then my husband had to engineer how that would look and what it would have. But we noticed some of the big, uh, bio, you know, some of the beautiful gardens you go to mm -hmm. uh, that have greenhouses, the kind that you tour, uh, they have shade cloth. And there's yeah. where we went, oh, that's how that works. Uh, but it's set up to be a working greenhouse, so that's not just to be a pretty. Yeah. And the first thing I did was make a sitting area so we could sit and we could visit. Mm -hmm. But I did have the, the you know, uh, something put in that I could pot plants. And, and the idea is we'd like to be able to start plants, maybe have it grow all year. Yeah. You know, maybe have some nice tropicals to give you a little green therapy when, you know, it's middle of winter. Yeah. Uh, but our next journey is uh, um, running electric to it and then seeing what the cost is to keep the temperature in it at a viable temperature for the plants. Right. So uh, we've got a little bit of learning to do there, you know, yeah. but, oh. but we'll do it. We'll yeah. figure it out. Always takes a little research and hey, Google's yeah. the best when it comes oh, to research. Oh yeah, we love, we <laughs> love, <laughs> love Googly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I did make sure that wherever you went in the garden, you had a place to sit. Um, because you you know you want to ponder you sometimes you want to meditate but it also gives um, as a person uh, who has disabilities gives me a spot to kind of nest you know if I need to take a break yeah so all through the garden and even in the greenhouse we got some place to sit that's great yeah okay what is this this is miscanthus grass we went to a party, guy had a little thing about this big, was grown up by his door, and I went, oh, it's so pretty, I'd love to have a sample. I didn't know I had adopted Frankenstein. <laughs> and uh, he got here, it has roots like bamboo, uh, so you can't just chop it down. It, it considers Roundup a friend. Uh, we did try to kill it once, we are so sorry. And uh, she came right back and went, I'm twice as big now. So no more trying to kill. We just worship her as she is. The really neat thing about it is in the winter, you know, you don't want to have your garden so sparse that in the winter it has no personality. Right. So in the winter, she's got this gorgeous topping of like, like bamboo or straw uh -huh. and the birds nest inside of it and it gives them a great safe place to be. Uh, I have a garter snake that hangs out in there a lot, um, and it is growing. It is getting bigger and bigger. So if you notice, we've left it a large <laughs> space. And, and, you know, we said, please don't eat the greenhouse, you know. Yeah. But miscanthus is a biofuel uh, used in some places. They actually harvest and cut it and use it as a fuel. Uh, so it is, uh, it's not what I would recommend for every garden. You've got to have a, a garden that's a little wild. Yeah, I don't do think this. I could fit this in my yard. Yeah, yeah, it will take over. <laughs> but you know, if you grew tomatoes, you'd have some great tomato steaks in here. Interestingly enough, the leaves are like, they will cut you like um, a, a paper cut. Oh, They're I bet. very sharp. Yeah. Yeah, so she defends herself. Interesting.